My name is Andrew Harrison. I'm a student in the Medical Scientist Training Program at Mayo Clinic. In other words, I'm a student in Mayo Graduate School pursuing PhD training in biomedical research and also a student in Mayo Medical School pursuing MD training in medicine and the lead author of this paper entitled Developing the Surveillance Algorithm for Detection of Failure to Recognize and Treat Severe Sepsis. My name is John Park. Um, I'm the uh, consultant in our Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine. I'm quite involved in our sepsis management within our institution. I'm actually not um, part of the author uh, of this uh, manuscript, but I've been asked to uh, discuss some general ideas about uh, ideas and importance of sepsis. Uh, the objective of this study was to improve an algorithm for the detection of sepsis as well as the detection of delay in treatment of sepsis. And the, I suppose the importance of this, uh, this paper, this manuscript, is that uh, we recognize sepsis is a very important disease. We see it quite often and it's unfortunately it's been associated with very high mortality. Um, fortunately, over the past 10 years or so, over the past decade, our ability to uh, manage sepsis has dramatically improved um, in terms of our how we manage these uh, patients, uh, what we do, um, and of all the things that we've implemented, it seems that the most important thing is being able to detect it early and intervene early. Um, several of the studies have shown that if we can um, recognize it early, intervene, and do something, do some um, treatments aggressively early in their course, that their outcome is significantly improved. Um, on publications, the mortality has improved from baseline of some 45% uh, in a study in 2002 down to close to 20% in the most recent trials. And so that's a dramatic improvement and I think this, um, this manuscript uh, attests to the importance of early detection and how do we detect that early um, and so that we're able to intervene and try to improve the outcomes of this uh, devastating disease. After looking at a variety of variables, we found that the most important contributors to the identification of sepsis were a low blood pressure followed by the presence of the so-called systemic inflammatory response syndrome followed by the presence of a microbiology culture order. The uh, specificity of the system to detect sepsis was 96%. In other words, the ability of the system to detect sepsis amongst the cohort of um, patients with sepsis that we examined, the sensitivity was 80%. In other words, um, measure of how many of those patients we were able to detect. As for the delay in treatment component of the sepsis algorithm, we looked at a variety of variables including um, measurements for presence of systemic hypoperfusion as well as the presence of um, other EMR, electronic medical record orders, and we found that um, upwards of two-thirds of patients had this delay in um, treatment following the detection of sepsis. So um, in the heels of this, the results of the study, we've actually implemented that this uh, model uh, in a prospective manner. And so now in our intensive care unit, we're trialing uh, the, a bit this uh, detection algorithm to notify the clinicians that a patient may potentially have sepsis that then forces the clinician to rec either um, recognize that the person may in fact have sepsis or perhaps um, their hypoperfusion for other reasons. So it forces a clinician to interact with this alert system, which then allows us to recognize whether and think whether, uh, consider whether the patient actually has sepsis and allowing us to then do our interventions. Um, and we've actually taken this algorithm, this model that we have, uh, that they've designed into a, a another level where now we're able to, in real time, look at how we're doing, uh, look at our performance and how we're um, uh, resuscitating these patients. So on the heels of the study, it's this important study, it's allowing us, the clinicians, to then interact with this and, um, and help us in our management of our patients where sometimes we may not recognize a person, a patient may have sepsis, but based on the algorithm, at least it forces us to consider whether this person might in fact have sepsis, in which case, if we agree that the person may have sepsis, then we can then initiate our intervention in a timely manner. The conclusion of this study is that 
there's tremendous potential for improving both the detection of sepsis as well as the detection of delay in treatment. However, there are a number of limitations. Perhaps the largest is that this is a single center study, so like all other previous studies have been. It's also a retrospective study. In other words, it was performed using a group of um, patients prior to the study analysis. So there is ultimately a need to perform this study prospectively across multiple institutions, perhaps using new mathematical modeling techniques as well as looking at additional variables that were not examined in this study, such as um, the presence and use of um, various antibiotics. So I think um, the take home message I think is it, leveraging a, in our electronic medical record environment where we're able to pull various data. Um, Andrew and their team have now designed a, an algorithm which will um, help us help the clinicians detect uh, sepsis early and the algorithm that they've designed appears to be very uh, sensitive and specific and so at the end of the day, I think it's important for the clinicians to first recognize that a person may have sepsis and intervene early. And I think this algorithm that they designed is helping us to do that. We will be obviously taking this to the next step and looking in the prospective manner, but ultimately I think to help our patients with um, severe sepsis and septic shock, it is that early recognition and early treatment and intervention that I think this algorithm will become uh, very important for us. Uh, going forward and, and further reducing the mortality associated with severe sepsis and septic shock. Beyond this study, I think um, it will be important for us to look at how the implementation of these sorts of alert systems in the ICU environment for critical care providers such as Dr. Park influences things such as alert fatigue and information, other information overload otherwise the implementation will ultimately not be successful. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.